everyone this is dr aditya sibi chakravarti from dr talks today we will be dealing with acute rheumatic fever so what is this acute rheumatic fever as we all know acute rheumatic fever is one of the most common prevalent cardiac disease in all the developing countries in the developed countries however the incidence of acute rheumatic fever has been coming down but in the developing countries acute rheumatic fever is present in high uh, high range so what are the high risk factor for this prevalence of acute rheumatic fever in developing countries the first one will be the overcrowding second one will be the poor sanitation and third one will be the unemployment and poor socio economic status and poor compliance with the treatment uh, patient receiving treatment very late all these reasons of the uh, all these are the causes why there is high prevalence of acute rheumatic fever in developing countries so what does this path what is the pathogenesis so what happens in acute rheumatic fever is that a child usually between 5 to 10 years age group he will develop a streptococcal pharyngitis this streptococcal pharyngitis is more common with uh, patients who are in overcrowded and poor population urban slums these people can easily get the pharyngitis after the pharyngitis uh, there will be some waiting period so about 3 to 4 weeks later the patient will show signs of arthritis carditis and the other manifestation will be there then you can uh, diagnose the patient as rheumatic fever rheumatic fever so why a pharyngitis can cause uh, pharyngitis 3 weeks earlier can cause this carditis and other manifestations this is because of a concept called as molecular mimicry there are some antigens of the uh, group a streptococcal uh, pharyngitis that can cross react with the human antibody the antibodies that are formed against that antigen can cross react with our own uh, human anti uh, antigens so what are this cross reacting compounds first the m protein the streptococcal m protein can cross react with the human myosin and tropomyosin of the heart then the streptococcal cytoplasmic membrane can cross react with the vascular intima and the cell wall protein can cross react with the myocardial muscle and the hyaluronic acid can cross react with the synovial fluid so uh, you have a streptococcal pharyngitis that is formation of certain antibodies to the streptococcal antigen this antibodies can target our native antigen as foreign and result in the manifestations so uh, how does the streptococcal pharyngitis usually it will be seen in a young age group a 5 to 15 years there is no predisposition male female both male and female are equally affected in streptococcal pharyngitis but the male population can develop aortic wall disease more common whereas the female population develops mitral wall disease and chorea that is more common in female population now how does this pharyngitis it is present the patient will have fever sore throat difficulty in swallowing on examination there will be tonsil and tonsil areas and the pharyngeus area will be reddish there is erythematous there will be exudations there will be swelling of the uvula soft palate petechial lesions can be present anterior cervical lymph nodes can be enlarged this is more commonly seen in winter season and some uh, lot of children of that particular uh, nearby areas will also have this pharyngitis so this is the pharyngitis presentation once the patient has pharyngitis then later or one week or two week later he will develop ma manifestations of rheumatic fever those manifestation includes the carditis carditis this carditis and rheumatic fever will be a pancarditis pancarditis means there will be pericardial inflammation myocardial inflammation and endocardial inflammation pericardial inflammation can present as chest pain frictional rub on auscultation and ecg shows uh, st abrasion Uh, st uptake the concave st uptake can be seen in ecg and pr depression can be seen in ecg then there can be evidence of myocarditis in the form of soft s1 s3 gallop the patient can have cardiomegaly patient can have congestive cardiac failure and there will be tachycardia this is the features of myocarditis endocarditis there can be the murmur the new onset murmur uh, that is what is seen in endocarditis they can have mr murmur a pan systolic mitral regurgitation murmur can be present or a ar murmur early diastolic murmur of ar can be present or a mid diastolic murmur that can be because of the mitral volvulitis that is called as the carycombs murmur this rheumatic endocarditis is responsible for most of the clinical manifestation in uh, acute rheumatic fever the congestive cardiac failure that occurs is basically because of the endocarditis so uh, 2d echocardiography can identify this cardiac is very early before it is manifested clinically clinically you can pick the echo by this auscultation 
but echo uh, clinically it can uh, it could be auscultation but echo can identify the pathological mitral regurgitation or the aortic regurgitation or a combined aortic and uh, mitral regurgitation or a formation of gradient more than four in mitral stenosis all this can be picked up in acute lesion mitral regurgitation is the most common uh, mitral wall is the most common wall to be involved in uh, carditis and mitral degurgitation is the classical finding that is the most common finding uh, it is in 90% of the patients with acute traumatic fever aortic regurgitation can be seen in uh, in 20 to 30 percent patients tricuspid is very rare 5 to 10 percent can be seen and pulmonary regurgitation is very very rare regurgitation lesions are more common in acute traumatic fever whereas in rheumatic heart disease in established rheumatic heart disease there will be recurrent episodes of carditis resulting in uh, formation of a mitral stenosis mitral stenosis is the most common rhd mitral regurgitation is the most common manifestation of acute traumatic fever acute traumatic fever and rhd are two different entities so uh, this is the carditis histopathologically uh, there will be sites of inflammation within the heart these are called as the ask of bodies the ask of bodies has got a central place where there is eosinophilic material this eosinophilic material will be infiltrated with neutrophils eosinophils macrophages t lymphocytes this macrophages is what is called as the anichkov cells these are plump activated macrophages what happens is that repeated episodes of inflammation can lead to myocardial thickening the wall can go for thickening commissures can go for fusion and there will be shortening of cardiac tendine resulting in fish mouth or button hole stenosis uh, the pericarditis can result in pericardial effusion but this pericardial effusion can be either serous or serofibrinous exudation but they do not go for tamponade usually uh, so this is the carditis manifestation it can lead to congestive cardiac failure and new onset murmur then arthritis arthritis the arthritis is unique because it is a migratory polyarthritis involving the large joint like the knee joint ankle joint the um, elbow joints wrist joint the large joints are involved small joints are not involved and migratory polyarthritis one day you will have the knee joint involvement the next day joint uh, the uh, ankle involvement so it, it will go on progressing there will be very severe uh, pain the patient pay be the child will have pain there will be swelling there will be redness there will be tenderness and synovial fluid examination will show high wbc count uh, this uh, arthritis usually heals without any sequelae the carditis can heal with uh, rheumatic heart disease but arthritis heals without any sequelae except in jacquard's condition uh, other condition heals uh, good and it shows very good response to aspirin that is another clinching point the other finding will be the erythema marginatum this erythema marginatum can appear as uh, non prorotic non painful a lesion over the trunk and the proximal extremities of the arm a phase in the distal part of the leg will not be uh, it is will be present there only in the chest region there will be multiple lesions uh, they can be bright pink macular papular lesions which are non prorotic they can blanch under they don't blanch under pressure so this is the classical finding it is not seen in indian population because of the dark complexion but this is this is one of the common findings it is an early manifestation whereas the subcutaneous nodule is a late manifestation the uh, carditis arthritis and marginatum all the three are the early manifestation they appear within 3 to 3 to within one week or one month within one month you can see these are these two are the late manifestations subcutaneous nodules and the rheumatic gorea subcutaneous nodules they can be pinhead or almond sized nodules they can be over present over the surface of the bone they indicate uh, carditis and they indicate severe carditis um, the subcutaneous nodules can be seen over the uh, extensor aspect of the shin or the occipital of the tibia occiput or the spine all these places on the elbow they can be seen so what is a rheumatic chorea rheumatic chorea is a late manifestation of acute traumatic fever it is also called as the same vitas dance it is characterized by a triad there will be uh, uh, irregular movements of the upper limb of the face of the feet there will be irregular movements with there will be muscle weakness and muscle hypotonia will be present and the patients will be emotionally labile so it's a triad of emotional lability muscle weakness and um, involuntary movements that is a triad so this uh, patients with the subcutaneous rheumatic chorea show certain signs like jack in a box tongue jack in a box tongue means if the patient is asked to protrude their tongue out the tongue goes in and comes out back back to back it goes in and comes out that is called a jack in a box tongue second only the pronator sign will be positive when they are asked to raise their hands 
above their head they will go for pronation of uh, one of the arms that is possible and other sign will be the if they are asked to tightly hold the finger they won't be able to tightly hold the finger they will go for repeated squeezing it is called as the milkmaid's grip that is positive and the patient's handwriting will be very poor and attempted walking they will try to stumble upon attempted walking this can be there the patient on uh, protruding the tongue it resembles a bag of worm and the speech is jerky and staccato uh, this rheumatic chorea can be managed with the help of phenobarbital haloperidol these drugs can be given in its management so how do you diagnose acute rheumatic fever the diagnosis of acute rheumatic fever is based on the jones criteria jones criteria has two groups the major uh, manifestation the minor manifestation the major manifestation has got the five parts uh, it can be carditis it can be arthritis uh, pancarditis migratory polyarthritis patient with erythema marginatum subcutaneous nodules and presence of um, rheumatic chorea the five the major criteria the minor criteria can be presence of fever polyarthralgia or ecg evidence of prolonged pr interval or uh, patients with um, raised dsr and crp uh, that is the minor criteria for a diagnosing an acute rheumatic fever there should be one major or one minor criteria should be positive for diagnosing an initial episode of acute rheumatic fever or um, so how do you what is the high risk criteria for acute rheumatic fever the high risk patients means there should be um, high prevalence of rheumatic uh, fever in those population for example take india in india there is very high prevalence of rheumatic fever so we kind of lose on the guidelines so in india even um, do not you need not go for polyarthritis for uh, major criteria polyarthritis monoarthritis even polyarthralgia all the three can be taken as a major criteria and monoarthralgia can e uh, be taken as a minor criteria that is the first difference the second difference will be the presence of fever in a low risk population the temperature should be more than 38.5 degrees centigrade uh, to call it as fever here more than 38 degrees centigrade will be taken as fever the second point thirdly the patient's esr should be more than 60 mm in uh, low risk population here more than 30 mm will be taken as significant in the high risk population so how do you define this high risk and low risk high risk means and the prevalence should be more than uh, the prevalence of rheumatic heart disease should be more than uh, uh, one cell per 1000 population or uh, more than or equal to two cell per 1000 population and the prevalence of um, acute rheumatic fever should be more than two school going children per 1 lakh population uh, that is the high risk populations so what is the how do you investigate a patient with acute rheumatic fever a child with initially had a history of streptococcal pharyngitis then is presenting now with uh, arthritis or carditis you have to measure the patient's wbc the wb scans can be elevated esr crp can be elevated the patient's aso data adb data this can be elevated aso more than 333 dot units in children or 250 dot units in adult can be taken as significant adb data can also be elevated and the patient's throat culture can be taken if there is having evidence of pharyngitis a rapid antigen detection test can be done then you have to go for ecg x ray uh, 2d echo to identify any pathological mental in the presence of any mental degeneration or a presence of uh, cardiomegaly or congestive cardiac failure or ecg showing heart block first degree pr pr prolongation these findings can be taken for diagnosis once you make a diagnosis of acute rheumatic fever you should manage first basic management if the patient is in failure you have to go for admission the patient should be admitted in icu and the patient should go for sodium restriction loop diuretics low dose joxin this can be given if the patient is having severe volar regurgitation you can try ac inhibitors in such patients so send the anti inflammatory treatment anti inflammatory treatment can two drugs either an nsaid or steroids can be given for patients with mild uh, carditis and arthritis aspirin is a drug of choice aspirin is given at a dose of 100 mg per kg per day for a period of 2 to 3 weeks and then tapered over a period of 12 weeks if there is aspirin intolerance you can go for a naproxen 10 mg per kg per day uh, for the same duration or if the patient is having a severe carditis or ccf or cardiomegaly then you have to go for steroids if steroids should be given at a dose of 2 mg per kg per day prednisolone or if the prednisolone is not responsive you have to go for iv methyl prednisolone uh, 20 mg per kg per day can be given iv methyl prednisolone for a period of 3 days uh, then what is the primary prophylaxis a patient uh, for the present the first time with the evidence of streptococcal pharyngitis 
I have to take this swab and if the RDT is positive or a culture comes as group A septocal pharyngitis is positive or even empirically if there is clinical evidence of um, bacterial pharyngitis there should be um, uh, viral pharyngitis we can have kanji, koreiza, running nose, the lacrimation these findings will be present if, there is a, if, you can, if you confirm it as bacterial pharyngitis then you have to start the patient on penicillin uh, either a penicillin B 250 mg BD if the patient is less than 27 kg or 500 mg BD if the patient is more than 27 kg that can be given or injection benzathane penicillin um, 6 lakh units if it is less than 27 kg or 1.2 million if it is more than 27 kg that can be given if the patient uh, penicillin allergy or penicillin is uh, not available you go for cephalexin or cephadroxyl they can be given if they are not available you can go for macrolides like acetromycin 500 mg OD or a clarithromycin 250 mg BD or evidence of clindamycin 600 mg TDS they can be given uh, weight based management uh, so primary treatment this primary treatment is effective even if it's delayed by a period of 9 to 10 days after the onset of pharyngitis it can still prevent the uh, reduce the bacterial load on the uh, pharyngeal pharynx and it can also reduce the incidence of acute rheumatic fever and uh, secondary prophylaxis once the patient is diagnosed above uh, acute rheumatic fever the secondary prophylaxis should be given to prevent recurrent uh, acute rheumatic fever only this recurrent acute rheumatic fever can result in established RHD not the first episode so secondary prophylaxis can be given with either benzathane penicillin again uh, 6 lakh unit less than 27 kg or 1.2 million if it's more than 27 kg that should be given once in three weeks or you have to go for penicillin V uh, it should be given as 250 mg BD if it is less than 27 kg or 500 mg BD if it is uh, more than 27 kg if there is penicillin allergy sulfonamides can be given sulfadiazin 0.5 uh, grams or 1 gram uh, based on weight based less than 27 kg 0.5 gram or more than 27 kg 1 gram can be given if there is penicillin and sulfonamide both allergy you can go for macrolides azithromycin or erythromycin or clarithromycin they can be given what is the duration of treatment patients with rheumatic heart disease if the, if the, if there is no evidence of uh, carditis I mean, I mean acute rheumatic fever but there is no evidence of carditis he should be given on secondary prophylaxis for 5 years or 21 years of age whichever is late whichever is longer that should be given if the patient is having uh, evidence of carditis but there is no residual heart defect then it will go for 10 years or 21 years of age whichever is longer that can be given if the patient is having established rheumatic heart disease then the patient should be go for uh, 10 years or 40 years of age whichever is longer that can be given if the patient is under having any uh, wall or surgery then lifelong treatment with secondary prophylaxis should be given so a young boy presenting with evidence of pharyngitis for the first time uh, inadequately treated with antibiotics uh, again two to three weeks later presenting with uh, uh, arthralgia or uh, chest pain or with uh, failure features you have to think in terms of a new onset murmurs you have to think in terms of acute rheumatic fever and treat it accordingly and the evidence they can do should do an echo and apply the Jones criteria uh, look for the AS1 ADB data in such patients and if it's elevated if you diagnose an acute rheumatic fever you should treat it with uh, both anti-inflammatory agents and uh, antibiotics as the case warrants so this sums up our discussion on acute rheumatic fever I hope this discussion was useful if you found this discussion to be useful I would like you to share this uh, with your friends subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends which will help the channel grow thank you